Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Wilmson. I'm the publisher of Fierce Pharma, and I'm here today with John Pada, CEO of Elego Health Research. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Uh, so John, you know, something that the industry has been discussing a lot over the past few months, um, talk to me about how COVID-19 has impacted clinical trial participation and execution, and what do you think the industry has learned from this pandemic? Ah, great question. You know, COVID initially really stopped everything dead in our tracks. You know, we saw studies pause, we saw uh, practices shut down and, and all of that. And I used to say that then we sort of moved into a post-COVID stage, but really, we, you know, we're not really in a post-COVID world yet. So what we really did was learn to adapt like everybody else did in, in certain ways. And so we saw clinical trials take and start to use the you know, innovative ways of, of connecting and communicating and handling data and the ways that we interacted with our patients in order to keep trials moving on. And, you know, today, I would, I think that our trials are really moving forward much like they would have before, although we're really utilizing some of the new innovations that perhaps were, uh, you know, not looked at as widely as they were before. It's like, um, like in healthcare, you know, I've, I've myself have had a couple telehealth visits with doctors. And now that I've done that, I really can't think that I really want to go back and sit in a waiting room for an hour to see a doctor. So these things, I think, will end up being enduring parts of the way clinical trials are conducted. Yeah, very good. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, diversity in clinical trials. Why is mm -hmm. diversity becoming so important in clinical trials today? I think, I think diversity is, is an important topic, and I think it's something that we've heard about throughout the years, but it's something that's becoming harder and harder as fewer physicians and practices are engaging in, in clinical research. So we've seen more of a professionalization of clinical research in the last few decades at the same time that you saw a consolidation of healthcare. And so you saw a gulf emerge between the two and clinical trials became an urban suburban phenomenon that uh, became a nine to five uh, opportunity for certain patients to participate in clinical trials and not others. So, you know, I think one of the efforts is, is important is not only to get diversity of uh, ethnic diversity, but also geographic diversity and starting to get more uh, connected to rural settings and, and uh, populations outside of, of uh, major centers. And I think this is important because we want to have a truly representative sample of patients participating in a clinical trial and, and you know, having those logistical restrictions, it does affect who's participating. So why do you think there hasn't been more diversity in clinical trials in the past? Well, I think, I think it really comes down to three things. I think it's, it's, you know, we're trying to get closer to the patients. I think having a clinical trial in the city in which you live, perhaps being conducted by your own physician is a better way of connecting. Uh, we know that the best way for a patient to participate in a clinical trial is if it's with their own physician and that that's who's approaching them about a clinical trial. I think also we know that, that we have to engage the community as well. And so just because you're setting up a center or enabling a physician nearby to participate in a clinical trial doesn't mean that the community is going to engage in that in that clinical trial and so you have to also uh, do your clinical engage your community engagement start talking to the different leaders in the community and to help educate the world about the uh, opportunities that you're bringing and why why it's a, it's an important opportunity and last i think and it's something you know earlier mentioned is the ability to really uh, take away logistical issues, you know, from the patient and participation. So, you know, if you're asking a patient to come into the office, you know, between uh, nine and five, you know, three times a week for the next six weeks, that's hard. That's hard for a lot of people to do. And so just like healthcare, you see people having early morning hours, afternoons, late evenings, uh, weekends, and our, our home visits, those types of things, so that we're trying to not just ask a patient to volunteer for a clinical trial and then asking them to also take on the heavy logistics burden, but trying to adapt what we're doing back to the patient and utilizing a lot of the same uh, methods of doing so that already exist within healthcare. 
So sticking with that um, a little bit, in what ways can researchers solve for this to, we, to ensure that we have more diverse populations uh, represented in trials? I think, I think there is a, first it's just having a commitment to do so. I think, you know, trying to go out, there's a lot of ways to uh, get access to diverse communities today. So there are a lot of groups like uh, ours that are uh, connecting and making those physicians uh, research ready and able to participate in clinical trials. And so, you know, and, and it's also one of the important things is, is to not think about this as a, uh, you know, a, a situation for one trial. You know, we know that 40% of clinicians who do a clinical trial in a year don't ever do another one. And so, you know, if we're going to have this being an enduring part of the community, we have to enable that and commit to that so that these uh, practitioners have enough uh, sustainable volume so that they can continue to do clinical trials. And I think that's what's really important is it's, it's easy to get them up for one trial. It's harder to make it an enduring part of what's, what's going on. And that's something that, that we all have to focus on. Sure, sure. Uh, so to kind of sum things up, what else should the industry be doing to solve these issues and accelerate research? I think one big thing that we can continue to do is awareness. You know, uh, with COVID vaccines and, and all of that happening throughout this year, you know, uh, the awareness of the general public to the fact that drugs go through clinical trials and, and that that's something out there, you know, is great. You know, I'd really love to see at the end of every pharmaceutical commercial, uh, you know, something, five seconds about clinical trials. You know, I think that that's, we already see some that thank their participants in clinical trials. Why not use a little bit of that time to remind people that this is something they might hear about or to ask their physician about clinical trials? You know, why not make that, you know, let's, that's, a, that's a definitely a self-serving uh, act to take. So continuing to build awareness and, you know, that on top of access. I think the other thing that's really important as we start to move this along is looking at the flow of information and data. You know, as we're starting to get into healthcare more closely and looking at how we take that healthcare data and have it flow through in a seamless way to get from that, uh, you know, source to submission, you know, ability that will also help to accelerate trials. You know, if we do the right things with uh, connecting and getting to the right populations and doing this, there's no reason why, you know, we can't, you know, warp speed every trial through development. There's no reason why with broad access into healthcare and, and clinical trials, bringing them closer, that you can't take every trial and run it 10 times faster for enrollment. Than, than traditionally, which is just keeps getting longer and longer. So this this is really one of those things that benefits everybody. That's great. Um, well, that's all the questions that I have. Um, John, thanks so much for joining me today. I think this was a great conversation. Great, happy to be here and thanks for the time.